Hello again, Steve here, and tonight I want to talk a little bit about something called speaking truth to power. Now, as I may have mentioned before, I'm actually writing another book here, and it's about the, has to do with the 8,000 kilometer walk that I finished less than a year ago. And the book is basically a commentary of my trip, right? It's the subtitle on it is lessons learned through 10 million steps. It takes 10 million steps to walk 8,000 kilometers. And so it's a bit of a timeline, but within that I'm observing interesting things as I walk along, but also exploring the thoughts that go on. Because the theme of the walk was, you can see it right up here behind me, the Freedom Walk. That's the flag that I carried on the back of my backpack for 8,000 kilometers. So I get a lot of people, when I talk about freedom, they talk about, oh, Canada, great free country you're in, it's wonderful, it's wonderful, it's wonderful. And, you know, this idea of the free world, right? Canada's part of this free world. Well, speaking truth to power, I like to try to separate out and get as rudimentary as possible. And truth, of course, is calling things further more accurately what they are, right? So if we forget about countries and stuff like this, because these are just really just fictions, right? We make we make these things up, you know, people draw lines on maps and so on. So what is really going on? Well, to me, what's really going on is we have this giant space rock <laughs> flying through the, the space. And there's this phenomenon on it, this very phenomenal environment that has these creatures running around doing their thing. And what they're doing, from the most, from what I can see, is they're, they're everything they do. They're trying to survive. Their whole reproductive process, there is, is there as a, as a drive, for them to enjoy their moment or whatever. But it's like an innate drive that's in them, so that they can continue the species. But individually, they're trying to survive in the moment, and because they can survive, then they can reproduce. But that's really what's going on. And if we subject a, a creature to a certain kind of environment for a while, it adapts, right? You see it adapting. So as people moved around the world, they separated each other from very disparate parts of the world. So, and because we're all different individuals, our experience of freedom is going to be different. Like, in other words, if we're all different heights and slightly different colors and different this and different that, then why wouldn't our concept of freedom be different? And the spectrum of freedom, it goes from complete enslavement, the, you know, from, from the, the re, I mean, I'm talking about freedom from the standpoint of relations with others. I'm not talking about internal freedom, but the relations with others. It's a relationship of total enslavement or complete voluntary interaction, right? That's that kind of the spectrum. So, very certain, pr very primitive animals, they operate completely on a control nature. And then some ones, they have certain voluntary interactions, certain manipulations that take place to get people to do, to get different animals to do things. But my, my belief is very strongly that we adapt because of evolution, because of the necessity to evolve in order to survive. So we, we get involved in different practices that just happen to work better for us. And for some reason, certain peoples in certain geographic regions, maybe, maybe because of hardships of, of environments, the necessity to get along really well, evolve to be more cooperative in the group, whereas other other tribes might be more authoritarian within the group, within the tribe, right? And as we evolve, just like any trait that comes up as a recessive trait that eventually comes up to the surface as more of a dominant, there's going to be even people within a group, even if they're fairly evolved along to behave in certain voluntary ways, there's going to be traits in some that are an older authoritarian trait. So, if we look at society, if we look at yes, yes, why why are there so it's not like there's any free area. If we walk all around the world, you're going to see freer areas, more voluntary areas than others. And this has to do, I think, with the individuals in the way they are in there, and the way the groups are together, and the number and how they interact. So there's an evolution going on, really, 
within the individual, but it reflects the group, right? So if you have an area that has a demand for the voluntary interaction, more people are going to evolve that way, and you're going to have more voluntary interactions in those groups. And then areas that that don't have the need for it, they're going to remain or even or even evolve to be more authoritarian, because that's also that would also be an evolutionary evolutionary trait. Now, what you have when there's empires is you put a, a thwarting on this. You have a mixing up of the traits again, the vegan again, right? So you you take your tribe and you make a larger tribe because tribes used to be fairly small, right? And you compile that by some warlord, and then there's that mixing pot again, and then that evens things out. But still, that is there's always that imperative, that evolutionary force to to weed out what is not necessary and to favor what is more favorable for the reproductive process. And so I think the reason why certain places are more free than others is because of those of those tendencies you have. Uh, I, I think it also has to do with levels of intelligence and the necessity to, I would guess that a a more voluntary society is a more intelligent society because when there's voluntarism going on, you, you have a greater degree, you, you have to have more um, management skills, if you will. You, you, you got to encourage people to do stuff. It's a little bit easier to just uh, bludgeon people, you know, in terms of intelligence and the necessary for the ne necessity to be able to read people's minds and so on. It's just obey me or else I'm going to bludgeon you. That's that's a more in, that's not as an intelligent I, I would say than encouraging people to cooperate through through voluntary methods and incentive incentivizing people to do stuff. So what I see happen now is that society you know continues to evolve and evolve and evolve and evolve, but it evolves to where the incentives are, and if the incentive is for voluntary, then it goes that way, and if it's not, it's not. But what happens, I think, is there's a third element going on. There's a third element going on. It's not just um, it's not just straight evolution in terms of how we think it, but it still is evolutionary, which is that when you have people who are injured, so you have typically it would be the more intelligent who would go towards voluntarism and the less intelligent would go towards um, authoritarian. But what about the ones who are intelligent and are authoritarian? These, I believe, are injured individuals who have been, you know, raised really roughly. And as a survival mechanism, they learn, because they're very intelligent, they learn how to use manipulation and coercion to, to get what they want, because intelligent people are going to get what they want more, or less, more often. But they, they find ways that it's easier to use manipulation because they cannot negotiate because they're operating under an authoritarian situation so they got to manipulate to get what they want and these i believe very strongly are the the the, the, the what you call the elites who run the large organizations the bankers the judges the priests the media moguls the kingmakers the all, all types of moguls who run these large authoritarian uh, manip and, and manipulative organizations doesn't mean that all people running a large organization are that way because it could be large voluntary organizations but these are manipulation uh, at the point of a gun or or manipulation uh, in terms of uh, the power of god type of manipulation as well and these are what i would call the adept the adept uh, course of rulers and the solution I would say to this is speaking truth to power I see a lot of that going on now with with new media and we see the the pushback the heavy pushback on it because truth is the biggest threat to those who want to take freedoms away those who want to run things authoritarianly and so speaking truth to power Truth to power is, is what's important, and we see it through history. Right, we see those who stood up for truth. People like Socrates. They were the ones who were 
were killed. I mean, because it's you don't, you don't want to you don't want to tell you know, the old story that the emperor has no clothes and everybody knows, but you can't say because you have your head chopped off. But we live in a great, wonderful time actually because we can speak truth to power. So it's I think it's important for every one of us who can do this to speak it and to realize that you know what we have this evolutionary track that we're on for sure but we're at the point in our evolution where we have this great expansion pack this neofrontal cortex that we can see past the veil we can kind of understand the track that we're on and apply our our, our strength and our intelligence to 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 favor one track versus another and this is a, a wonderful um, a wonderful thing to to experience i think but it also just it's not just about experiencing it if if we if we really have a strong a rationale a strong argument that speaking truth to power is actually going to improve the lot for many many people for the vast majority of people then it's not really a, an option for us it's our responsibility right because then we we know that if we didn't do it if we don't do it or if later on we we see that you know what if I had spoken up then uh, the world would be a better place but I didn't speak up and now it's a shittier place that's a very hard thing to face down the road but I think that you know coming back to this free place that a lot of people say is Canada well in the in the Bill of Rights that was printed in 1960 it says in there, it refers to free men and free institutions. Free men. Free. Right? That's an amazing statement. And who was it wrote that? It was people of a tribe who had evolved so that voluntary interactions, I would say, this is my guess, is important. Let's cherish that tradition and let's carry it forward and pay it forward and help people to see the value of cooperation and to see that because that that's what motivates people a lot of times too is like hey you know what if you go over here you're gonna make a lot of money a lot of people want to you know just as an example you know for the longest time there was lots of jobs out west right so people didn't have jobs in the east they go out west to get work because they're motivated to gain right? that's what this blob of of space rock traveling through space right with these creatures on it they want to gain they want to gain so that they can live they want more food and so on they want they want to get what they can get to to keep in their little their little hive for the for the tribe so if we can if we can make the case that by being voluntary being voluntary amongst one another being cooperative amongst one another is actually better for us then we're going to help others because that's better for us we understand that it's all self-driven at the bottom of it no matter how altruistic no matter how much we want to virtue signal if we're really honest with ourselves and remember again truth sets us free if we're honest about it we realize that we want to survive we want to enjoy life we want to survive 